So we go to the Monday night football card, which was in the 216. The Bengals coming in at 4 and 3 without Jamar Chase. And uh, he gone. Not on injured reserve, but he's out with an injury. And the 2 and 5 Browns stinking up football, something they've done a lot of over the years. Uh, Cleveland back to being the old Browns there. Cincinnati favored by 3.5 in this game. And I don't know if you watched it or not. Maybe you were stuffing your face with candy and you did not pay attention. But don't worry. All right, we, we watched here, and it was not much of a game. Nick chubba lub lub running for 101 yards and two touchdowns. And Jacoby Brissett actually looked like a NFL quarterback, something he rarely does, but he did in this game. He ran for a score, also tossed a touchdown pass. And the Browns clobbering the Bengals 32 the 13, the final, a domination situation. Cleveland snapping a four-game skid. And so they improved to three and five. Cincinnati drops to four and four with the loss. The better story in the losing locker room. And I'm old enough to remember when many pundits, NFL experts, told me the Bengals are now on their way. Right? The runway has been cleared for takeoff. Watch out. For Cincinnati, and they come crashing back down to earth, none the wiser, uh, those that listen to the pundits. So as we discuss the question, who do you blame for the Bengals' lifeless performance? What a toothless effort by Cincinnati's football team. I've got supersized Warner Brothers and hallucination, and we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make an amazing, amazing birthday cake. Why not? Every birthday, you want a big cake with candles and the whole thing. All right, so number one. Number one. Number one. There we go. Uh, what a letdown for Cincinnati. Just when you thought they had put the train back on the tracks, choo choo, we see a derailment. Now, To be fair, if you listened to Benny versus the Penny last week and took copious notes, we did advise you to take the Cleveland Browns plus the points, but did we expect this game to be a cakewalk? No, we did not. So we have to go to the bakery and Benny's Bakery, and we have to get a supersized blame pie. And you got to cut up the blame pie here. So I'm going to give the biggest slice of the blame pie to Zach Taylor, who we are told is the head coach of the Cincinnati football team and his coaching staff as well, not prepared. This team not prepared for the game. And it's a clunker, but it's also on brand for Zach Taylor. And this is not just locker room talk. Yes, Cincinnati did win the AFC, and they lost to a better team, the Rams, in the Super Bowl back in February. But Zach Taylor, as an NFL coach now, 57 games in, to his head coaching career. He's 16 games under 500. And the Bengals on this night were swimming against the tide from soup to nuts. There was no timing. There was no... It it, it was almost like they they found these guys off the street. They'd never played together. They had no rhythm. It was all choppy. It was uneven. And then you juxtapose the lack of ability on defense to tackle the offense timing being all messed up, and then you you go over to the fact that Joe Mixon and the Fat Boys up front, they also were not doing the synchronized dance routine. Uh, everyone gets to wear a shame bell, uh, Joe Mixon and the offensive line. The Browns kryptonite, and you don't even have to be an insider guy to know this, the Cleveland Browns' weakness has been their ability to stop the running game. Right. They, you don't need a Venn diagram here. They just cannot stop the running game consistently. It's gotten progressively worse. Cleveland's rush defense, ranking 25th in the NFL, giving up 135 yards per game. And the numbers are not going the right direction. The last month or so, the Browns have been giving up 165 yards per game. They're ranked 29th over the last three weeks. On this night, you would have thought this was the old Ravens defense from the early 2000s or even old school Chicago Bears back in the 80s as the, the, the Bengals were stonewalled 
And they had nowhere to run. Cincinnati finished with 10 carries in the game, 36 yards. They would have had more, but they abandoned the running game because they fell behind by such a wide margin. You wouldn't throw the ball, and it wasn't working anyway. Uh, Just not ready for any kind of fight here on the road. And also, in general, if you go back and look at the Bengals franchise, they don't travel well in prime time. They wallow, you know, they just kind of... They're hanging out in the sewer is what I'm trying. The Bengals, the last 13 primetime road games, they are 0-13. Now, I imagine that goes back to the Andy Dalton era in Southern Ohio, but 0-13, their last 13 primetime games, that's straight up, obviously, not against the spread. Now, page two. How concerned should Cincinnati fans be about the current state of the Bengals so the Maller scale of concern, 1 to 10, with 10 being Armageddon. Uh, I am at a 3. I'm at a 3 on the Maller scale of concern. It is, if you, if you have some skin in the game, I don't, but if you have skin in the game, it's discomforting but tolerable as long as this is an aberration, as long as this is one game. Cincinnati had won 4 or 5 coming in. They had also put up something like 65 points or so the last couple of games. So they played very well. Now they went out and they put out manure. All right, manure. They were shut out for 75% of this game. It was a Warner Brothers special is what this game was, a Pepe Le Pew uh, game. Uh, they played like uh, skunks. Uh, P.U. what stinks? As they stunk up the joint there in the Battle of Ohio, which I'm sure makes one of our callers, Dick and Dayton, very happy. He's a Browns fan more than a Bengals fan. But with Jamar Chase. Out of the lineup, there's an opportunity. We talked about it at the end of last week. We said there's a great opportunity here to rise up, to take advantage. When someone goes down, it opens up an opportunity. And T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd were nothing special when the game was in the balance. In fact, Joe Burrow in general, people making excuses. They always do for the quarterbacks. It's not his fault. It's not his fault. Blame the fat guys. Blame the fat guys. I know. Uh, Burrow was pressured a lot. But he also sucked at a time you cannot suck. And Joe Burrow got to a Super Bowl with a crap offensive line. So when you get to a Super Bowl with a terrible offensive line and you've proven you can make plays with a substandard set of blockers, it's harder, the degree of difficulty goes up, but you can do it. Joe Burrow's done it. So in this game, how did he do the first three quarters of the game? The answer is don't ask. Uh, Joe Burrow had no touchdowns, one interception, and a... Average yards per pass of 5.5 yards. His passer rating was below 70. And at the time, going to the fourth quarter, Cleveland, the Cleveland football team, led the Cincinnati football team 25-0. And then Joe Burrow turned into the stat bandito in garbage time. Burrow had a couple of touchdowns. He averaged 10 yards per attempt in the fourth quarter and put up a great period of, of football when the game was already decided now, nevertheless, if the Bengals lose to the Carolina Panthers, that three, that three on the Maller scale of concern jumps all the way up, all the way up. It'll be a DEFCON 1 situation. And sound the alarm bells. Sound the alarm bells if that happens. Now, final point. Let's turn the page over to the Cleveland side of things. Should the Browns now hold off? Hold your horses now. Hold off. Da, da, hold off. Don't make any irrational trades here. The deadline is on. Tuesday, that would be today. It's our Tuesday show. So the deadline is here today in the afternoon. And the Browns, if you believe what we were being fed, were about to unload several veteran players, and it was going to be a going-out-of-business situation. So I say they should still make a bunch of trades because they suck. And Cleveland gave a two-by-four to the forehead of the Bengals, and that's all wonderful and all that mazel tov. But... Putting up 444 yards in, in a game against the Browns does not, a game against the Bengals rather, does not take away from all the other bad stuff, right? Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. This is what's known as an hallucination. Abracadabra, a presto, and a Halloween magic. Jacoby Brissett looks solid, played well, which will help him when he is unemployed at the end of the year and looking for a new job somewhere. He'll get his sizzle reel. But it's more about the Bengals in this game. They were not ready to play. It's it's about that. 
rather than Cleveland being amazing, the trade deadline being this afternoon, I would expect the Browns to be wheeling and dealing. Kareem Hunt has one foot out the door, a serviceable lead back, allegedly, who has been a caddy for Nick Chubb, who has already nailed down the, the big spot there in Cleveland. The Brownies need to stack the deck, and, and, and they're going to have to figure out a way to do it in the offseason when they, well, they're going to bring back the creepy quarterback, that pervert's coming back later this year. Uh, the, and they can bring in some massage therapists, maybe some ba- baby yoga experts, and they'll be ready to roll. Uh, but, but Cleveland, if you think they're good, you are delusional. They're not. I mean, they played well for a night. I'll give them that. Like I said, they played well for a night. But up next, they play Dolphins in Miami, Bills in upstate New York, back-to-back, belly-to-belly on the road. That's a loss-loss, which means, barring some kind of act of God, the Browns will be 3-7, and seven, and then we'll be saying, turn out the lights, the party's over. Good luck on that. Good luck. It's not going to go well. 